Good morning, Victory's Vision Christian Church. Thank you for standing by. Had a little glitch. And on Father's Day, too, happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are joining us today. And we'll look at this on YouTube. Um, a father is just such a value to a child. Uh, my own father was such a value to me. And I didn't even know it till I was really saved and in the Word that my father by his just didn't say anything, but his example of loving the Lord as much as he did. And he had a heart, he had it hard. He had it hard in World War II, and he trusted God and came home. And then he had it hard in our home. It wasn't, my mother had a lot of issues, and he prayed on his knees every night. I'd go to the top of the stairs, and from the time I was a child, young, up until when I was an adult and left home, my father was on his knees every night praying for all of us. And that was, that built in me such an example, and I didn't know it till I found the Lord and his love, that my father loved us and he wanted the best for us, like all fathers do. And so, unfortunately, we don't all have good fathers or we have absent fathers, but there's other mentors in our life. And the best father, of course, is Father God. And he is such a joy for me. He's a friend, he's a comforter. And if you get in the word, he'll give you wisdom, he'll give you discernment, especially as if you're a young person, because you might be hanging around the wrong crowd and you don't even know it. They, they, don't, they don't want the best for you. God, the Father, wants the best, just like your earthly father does. And do they make mistakes? Yes, our earthly fathers do. And, uh, but just like them and us, God is um, un unconditional with his love. Today's talk is the value of a father's love. So valuable. And here's the scripture. As the Father has loved me, that's Jesus talking, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. John 15, 9. I don't know, it's just emotional. Father's Day. Uh, Pastor John, we have three children and three grandchildren, was an excellent father, really was. Always there, very patient and kind, and... Um, even though he had a tough job as a salesman going all over Phoenix area, he would n never miss games. He never miss all the drama they were in in high school. And he was there, taught him how to ride bikes, and taught him how to drive cars, and, um, and loved me unconditionally, which is really good for children. Pastor John is ready to come. Good morning, happy Father's well, Day. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Good morning to Victory's Vision Christian Church. We want to teach you today, and we want to share about the love of God, the love of the Father. A father should be an example to his children, and that love should come from God himself to the Father, to the children. Amen? Amen. Father God, I pray that all the hearts will be open that watch this video that watches live stream in the name of Jesus, that they can hear and receive the unconditional love of God from the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to remind you to go to victoriesvision.org. We have PayPal on there. And if you love these teachings, they lift you up. They um, change your thinking for the better. They inspire you. They um, you know, give you courage and strength to face the enemy and use the name of Jesus, um, then please give to this ministry. Give where you're fed. If Amen. you're going to places that's not really feeding you spiritually, you should give where you're fed, where the gospel is, and not to those that are just nice preaching, but it's just nice preaching. It isn't changing, should be changing, life -changing. you, life-changing your personality, changing everything for the better. So enjoy today. Don't forget, we have 150, over 150 teachings on YouTube. They're there for you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. 
Welcome to Victory's Vision. We use these glasses as a reminder. God gave me these glasses for myself, and I want to give them to you. That's our logo. He wants us to see the cross and see the blood of Jesus. It takes away all our guilt, all our condemnation, all our sin. And we can see that God loves us unconditionally. I want to start out with a little movie. Today we want to talk about the value of a father's love. What is that value? What does the word value mean? It means worth. What's in it to see? Is there value in God's love? Absolutely. God's love will heal you. God's love will set you on the right path of life. God's love will instruct you how to make the right choices in life. The more we can see God's love, that it's unconditional because of what Jesus has done for us. I love to talk about this, God's unconditional love. He loves us unconditionally all the time. Some of us have had good fathers. Some of us had not so good fathers. Mm -hmm. What about that? Do we cry and moan and groan about not having a good father? Do we blame our lives on him? We shouldn't. We should take what we learned about life and in our relationship with God the Father, take that love. That's the love that will set you on the right path. Amen. Amen. Woo. God created people because of his desire to express his love and himself he wanted as a father with a family. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let us let them have dominion. Let them, let them have dominion over the fish of the, of the sea, over every fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Over all the earth, it says, over all the earth, male and female, he created them. What are some of the attributes of a good father? Anyone can be a father. Anyone can be a father, almost. Mm -hmm. Anyone can be a father, but it takes a real man to be a daddy. A good father makes all the difference in a child's life. He's a pillar of strength, support, and discipline. His work is endless and oftentimes thankless. But in the end, it shows in the sound, well-adjusted children he raises. Think about that. 
attributes of a good father should model and teach us to stand for and to believe in ourselves and our dreams. He should inspire us to never give up and to muster the strength to face our fears with courage. Face our fears with courage. That's what your dad should teach you. That's what God teaches us. Face your fears and you can overcome them with faith in God's unconditional love. A good father should be a model and energize a strength and healthy sense of self-image. A healthy sense of self-image. How many people do we meet at all the time in this world that have a bad self-image? Lots of people. Especially even Christians I see. Their self-image is like down. They don't think that they're good enough for God to love them. They don't think that they're, that they just don't have the right knowledge. God loves you unconditionally. He cares about you. He wants the best for you. He wants a a good father should model and energize a strong and healthy self-image and a strong determination to make things happen. What does that mean, Pastor John, huh? God wants us to be intimate with him like a father and his children. God wants us to be intimate with him. The more intimate you are with God, the better your life will be. Too many people, they don't want to be intimate with God because they're afraid of God. They have wrong information about God. They think God is a judging, judging a uh, hard God, and he's not. His mercy endures forever. Come boldly to the throne of grace for mercy and help in a time of need. That's what it says, come boldly. He knows that in the flesh we can't be perfect. We're gonna do wrong stuff. And that's why he sent Jesus to pay the price for that. So we don't get under guilt. So, because we're faith beings. And when we get under guilt, what are you gonna do? You're gonna condemn yourself by faith. And it's gonna have an effect on you. God wants us to be intimate with him like a father and his children so we can be a partaker of his divine nature. God wants us to be a partaker of his nature, a divine nature. What does that mean? We're created in his image and likeness. The enemy stole that from mankind in the Garden of Eden, lied to them, and they believed it. And they ate of that tree, and they should not. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil or right and wrong and it put a standard in their life that they couldn't fulfill. And God had to end that standard with Jesus on the cross. The cross represents that tree. And when it was ended, Jesus said, it's finished, it's finished. And he paid the price for it in full. And when he died, we died, if we accept that. And when he was risen from the dead, we were risen from the dead. That's what born again really means. You're born now of the Spirit of God. And God only sees you when you accept that Jesus paid the price for all your sins and he died for them. And you're to reckon yourself to be dead unto sin, dead unto that old nature, dead unto that old acting. You're not under that standard no more. You're just to live by faith in what the cross has done for you. Live by faith in what the love of God can do for you. Mm -hmm. So we can be a partaker of his divine nature, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things. His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, through the knowledge, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Pastor John, Pastor John, what about that scripture which says he'll share his glory with no one? Whoa, wait a minute here. Is that a contradiction in the Bible? No, it is not. You died. And when you're born again, you're joined to the Lord. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. It's in Corinthians. He sees, the Father sees you. He sees Jesus. You entered into the glory of God by being in Christ and Christ in you. Hmm, read it in Peter. It's also... You've been called and you've stepped in to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. You believe it? Some of you don't believe that because you're stuck under the knowledge of the old law. You're stuck in that knowledge. It says that you're renewed in knowledge through the knowledge. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be a partaker of the divine nature the promises of god will put you in god's nature which what's the nature his personality his his attributes everything that god is he's taking you under him, 
under his self and put you in Christ, in Jesus. Shocking to some of us because we've never heard it before. But we've heard it. you got to study it. What does it mean to be in Christ? He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. That's what it means. He who knew no sin became sin that we may be the righteousness of God in Christ. That you might be a partaker of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust or uh, your feelings. 2, 2 Peter 1, 3-4. What does that all mean? It means God has called you. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Let me say that again. Behold, take a closer look. Get your mind focused on this. Take a closer look what manner of love the Father God has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. You're a child of God if you're in Christ. Think of what that means. You're just not a piece of junk anymore. That old junk died. You're a brand new creation in Christ. 1 John 3, 1. That's what it means. That's what it's saying. God has a plan and a purpose for all of us, but will not be fulfilled it until we see, understand, and abide in His perfect love. Let me say that again. God has a plan and a purpose for every human being, but those people will not see it until it's fulfilled when we understand and abide in His perfect love. You can be saved and be a Christian and not believe the love of God because you have no knowledge of it. When you get that knowledge, it's going to open up things to you. The Bible says in Colossians 3.10, put on the new man, put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of Him, after the image of Him that created Him. Think about what that's saying. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that would grant you, according to his riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through the Spirit in the inner man. Think of what that's saying. huh? The riches of his glory be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, too many people aren't rooted and grounded in the unconditional love of God, so they're constantly fearful. The Bible says in uh, the sower sows the word. It's in Matthew 13. It's in Mark 4. What does it say about the sower sows the word? It says that persecution and affliction arises for the word's sake. And some that have no deep root, they give up, they quit. They fade. The, the flower withers and fades. Your heart, your faith will wither and fade because you don't believe that God's going to take care of you. You don't believe that He has tomorrow in His hands. He has tomorrow's plan for you in His hands. And so you look around. There's no plan for me. God don't care about me. God, what's going on? Knowledge of understanding His love is everything in Christianity. Mm-hmm that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length, depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Hmm? How can you be filled with all the fullness of God? Comprehending the love of God. Comprehending. Everybody say this with me. I want to comprehend the love of God so I can be full, full of all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Not to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. The power that works in you should be the love of God, the unconditioned love of the Father for you. Oh, Pastor John, I don't think he loves me because I'm not so good. Get that kind of thinking out of your head. Accept what Jesus did for you. He died for you. He died for me. He died for us. Receive that. Your old you is gone. Your old you is dead. That's what baptism is all about. And you've risen as a new life, a new creation. All things are new according to God in you. So what does that mean, Pastor John? What's going on? Most Christians, and for sure the world, do not comprehend what the Father's perfect love in us can do when we believe it. Let me say it again. Most Christians, and for sure the world, do not comprehend what the Father's perfect love in us 
can do when we believe it. It is the su substance that heals spiritual, mental, and physical conditions. Let me say that again. It is the very substance, the substance that heals spiritual, mental, and physical conditions. Do you have a physical condition you need healing? A mental condition? Huh? Or a spiritual condition? But he was hurt for our wrongdoing. He was hurt, bruised for our sins. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished so we would have peace. He was beaten so we would be healed. Isaiah 53, 5 in the New Life Version. By his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. Because our sins have been cleansed and forgiven. And there's no more guilt in you. The guiltier you are, the more faith you have against yourself. Stop the condemnation. Stop the condemnation. What does all of this mean, huh? Perfect love casts out fear. So God, God is perfect love. God is perfect love. God is perfect love. Remember that. Wants you delivered by his grace, which is perfect love, when you are in trouble. God wants you delivered when you're in trouble. And he wants to use perfect love for you. Perfect love casts out fear. So God, God is perfect love, wants you delivered by his grace. Perfect love. When you're in trouble, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts fear out. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love, in understanding of God's unconditional love. There's nothing more powerful than the love of God. That's where healing power comes for your, your spirit man, your physical man, your mental part. Every It comes from the unconditional love of God. Look at this little guy. He's believing the love of God, of his father, God. Our faith is made effectual by understanding the father's love as a perfect unconditional love and to understand all its value. You got to understand the value of what is in God's love. All things, all things. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. That means legalism doesn't matter. Legalism, all things are lawful, the Bible says, but all things are not profitable for you. But all things are lawful. God's not going to condemn you. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you and lead you and guide you and put you on the road of, of grace and mercy. He's going to put you on that road for, so you can have a future and a hope. But only faith, let me say this again, for if we in Christ Jesus, for if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through God's love. Through the love of God, through God's love. Our father is Abba Father. He's Pops, he's Daddy, he's Dad. Dad, Dad, Dad. That's what God is. When God's love hits your heart, it changes you. When God's love hits your heart, it changes you. I'll never forget, when I got saved and born again, Pastor Nancy and I got saved on a Catholic marriage encounter. And what happened? I believed the love of God. I believed the love of God. I considered myself kind of a black sheep uh, of my family, a black sheep of the neighborhood. What does that mean? An oddball. You know, I'm not saying black or white means anything. I'm saying in that situation, I considered myself not worthy of anything. I considered myself second class. I considered myself not good. I considered myself junk. And all of a sudden, I found out that God doesn't make junk. I found out that God loves me so much that he sent Jesus to the cross and paid the price for all my guilt, all my condemnation, and it changed me. It changed me. I wanted to hug everybody. I wanted to just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know, I guess my heart's grieved for the people that can't see that. Why? Why can't they see that? Because they look at themselves naturally. Don't look at yourself naturally no more, but see who you are and what you can have in Christ, which is God's unconditional love. The perfect Father, God, our God, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows. Is God in his holy habitation? Defender? Yes. Is he a father to the father, fatherless? Yes. That's what it says in Psalm 68, 5. Isaiah 64, 8. In the Amplified Classic, it says, 
Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you're the potter. And we all are the work of your hand. And what is he building with us? He's building love in every fiber of your being, if you will allow it. Every fiber of your being. And it will change everything about you. Everything. You didn't receive the spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear. But you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8, 15. Abba, Father. My God, my God. Uh huh. Another movie for you. The value of a father's love. There's nothing, nothing comparable. I grew up with stepfathers. I grew up with a father that I only saw once or twice a year, but I knew he loved me. He showed it many times. You know, sometimes we have a father that isn't our biological father. Some are good, some are bad. But what I want to tell everybody is, those that were bad, let it go. Don't blame them for your life because you have a God, Father God, that will love you and make up so much in your life that you won't contain your love. What will happen is your heart will seem like it's going to burst because that love from God is so great. But all you got to do is see it. Let it in. Let it in. It'll change everything in your life and make it for good. There's nothing that we can compare to that unconditional love from God. There's people, even religious people, 
Sometimes Christians will say, oh, God's love is not unconditional. It's conditional. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. There was a time in my life that I felt that love so strong and I didn't even know what was happening. When our third child was born, she was a preemie. She almost didn't make it. They sent her, I say third child, because we had lost two. One had a heart defect and one just was stillborn. So what does that mean, huh? Well, we got saved. It made a difference. We gave our lives to the Lord. The difference was that the Holy Spirit took over our lives. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know the Word of God. The baby was in one hospital and they shipped her to another hospital and my wife, Nancy, got a staph infection from what she went through that she was in one hospital and either of them, both of them were not doing very good. And I'd check on them. I'd drive to the other hospital and drive back to the one, drive to the other one. And instead of worrying all the way, I knew two Christian songs and I began to sing those songs just to stay my mind on the Lord. Little did I know that that was the Holy Spirit working for me, putting me in a rest situation, putting me in a faith situation. The Lord reminds me of that 40 some years ago, 40 years ago. And he said, John, I'll lead you and I'll guide you and I'll give you peace and you will celebrate that peace with me together and it will be effective. Don't ever forget God loves you. Why people don't want to accept that, I don't know. I think they've been filled with the knowledge of religion, the knowledge of legalism, and they think that's how God is. But he's not. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever believe on him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Pastor Nancy, come on up. Excellent. I'm Excellent. I'm emotional. I know. The greatest fathers are the ones that love the Lord. My father was one of them. He, he absolutely adored God. He just loved to pray and he loved to go to church. Take your children to a Bible-based church. Make sure what they're learning is growing them up in the love and the mission of the Lord, not guilt and fear. And you teach them, you train them, you equip them by getting in the Word yourself. There's plenty of teachings. Go to our website, victoriesvision.org, and go. it will direct you to YouTube. And put one in daily, sometimes two. We prayed over a man yesterday who was having heart surgery. And uh, they already did the heart surgery. No, He's a didn't. father. Well, they tried to do it a few weeks ago. And um, they, had in the process, and they had a complication. They had to stop the whole procedure. So waiting all this time has kind of increased his fear a little bit. And this man was a, is a vet. And we prayed for him, and I said to him, put the Word of God in. Go to these teachings and listen, because it's good medicine. One or two a day. What else do you have to do? And he laughed, and he said, that's a good statement, Nancy. What else do I have to do? And uh, at the same place we were at, it was a picnic for vets yesterday. There was a couple of um, uh, young people there, and they were drug addicts. And it was just so sad to watch and so sad they were asking us for cigarettes. And I said, well, I don't smoke and be good if you didn't, but that was the least of their problems. And somebody pointed out, well, there was a butt on the ground and he picked the butt up. Look at what the enemy has reduced him to. And, you know, <laughs> and of course the person next to me was Christian, so we joined hands and prayed for them and prayed for these men. They are men, but they're young, young, young. And they're, the outlook on life isn't good. They need to know the love of God. You know, you are a light in somebody's life. This, these message goes out throughout the United States and the world. We're not there, but here we are in your teachings and trainings and equipping. Once you get hold of this, oh, it it's changes gold. everything. It's gold, everything. everything. You become the person you always wanted to be, and you'll like that person. 
So we encourage you, happy Father's Day. Have a good Father's Day. Um, and we have these enjoy. books too, Nance. We have our books. Oh, our books, uh, Take It First for Health. If you're a father, treat yourself. Go to our PayPal and order them. There's a place you can order them right on the uh, web page. And Emergency Faith First Aid, that's on fear. And it's excellent. And then um, the five L's of love. Five L's of love. And Receive the love of God and you can love your spouse. He's such a good dad. When our kids got sick, we had a couple that got, the enemy actually tried to take, take from us. And he knew how to pray. He knew how to take his authority. He knew how to calm the situation. What a great dad that knows that knowledge and acts on it. Please don't be just a hearer of the word, be a doer and give it out to others. Uh, we want you to have a great Father's Day. We love you. We'll see you next week. In between time, listen to us on YouTube. Great teachings. Amen. God bless.